Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ray and welcome back to our beginner OpenGL ES and GL kit video tutorial series. This is the last part of the series, so kudos for sticking through it the entire time. In this part of the series, we're finally gonna put the finishing touches onto our game. Here's what the game will look like when you finish this final part of the series. So far, to make this game, you've modified your code to organize your scene into a scene graph. You've also created a simple game scene and you've added some gameplay code into that scene. What's missing is just the finishing touches here. Any good game needs music and sound effects. We're gonna go ahead and add those in. And of course, we need a way to win the game or lose the game. Okay, so we have our game where we left it off last time. We have most of the gameplay here, actually, but there's two things, there's no sound, and if the ball hits the bottom of the screen, you don't lose. There's no way to win either. So you can't have a complete game, I don't think, without you know, music and win-lose conditions. So we're gonna add that in to finish up this game. So first of all, we're gonna go back to our director class and we're gonna add in some methods for playing sound effects. To do this, we're gonna to need to import AV Foundation. And we'll go ahead and add some new things in here. Play background music. And we'll add in a preload sound effect. And a play pop effect. I'm going to copy all those, switch over to the .m. Now for these, we're going to need a couple new instance variables, so let's go ahead and create those. I'm going to have two AV audio players, one for the background music and one for the pop effect. Okay, so play background music will simply create the background music player with preload sound effect. And we'll get to that in a minute, and then it will set the number of loops to negative one so it repeats forever and just start it playing. Okay, so preload sound effect, it will first convert the file name into a NSURL. Then it will create an AV audio player given this URL. Then you call prepare to play. That actually gets the audio player all loaded and ready to play and just return that. Okay, now back up in our initializer. Remember that pop effect we had? We're, we're going to preload that too. Remember we added those two audio files earlier. So for playing the pop effect, that's simply calling pop effect play. Okay, so now that we have this set up, let's modify our view controller to start playing some music. So going back to our view controller. Decided to play some background music. And going back to our game scene, there's certain conditions where we want to play a sound effect. So first of all is if it bounced, we want to play a sound effect. So in all these conditions, it's bounced. So we're going to want to play a sound effect. And there's a couple other cases. If the ball hits the paddle, we'll play that sound effect. And if the ball hits a brick, we'll play that sound effect. So let's run it again. Okay, we have some music. So the last piece of this puzzle is we want to be able to switch when the user wins or loses to a different scene, a game over scene. So first of all, we need to create that scene. So I'm gonna create a new class called RWT game over scene and it will derive from RWT node. So I switch it to the header file, it'll have an initializer as usual, and it'll have a win condition. So going to the .m file, uh, we need to import some models here. We have a model for you lose and a model for you win. We also need to import the game scene, we'll need that later, and the director. I'm going to keep track of how long it's been since this scene has started. Okay, and in here, let's initialize it. All right, and we're going to have the code just like we did before to set up the game area. And rather than typing it in again, I'm just going to paste it in. This is the same code from earlier. The only difference is the rotation is slightly different. And let's set up the message that should be displayed.
So if it's win, we're going to have the UN message and it's going to show up in green. If you lose, we'll have the RWT you lose message and it'll show up in red. So either way, we're going to position this in the same place, which is roughly in the center of the screen, and add as a child. And there's one more thing. Remember, we're keeping track of the time that the scene has started. And if the time since start is greater than five seconds, this is where we want to switch back to new game. But right now, we're not sure how do we switch between scenes. I mean, we know we could go to rwtviewcontroller.m and we could switch the rwt game scene to this rwt game over scene and it would show up when we first start up. But what if we want to switch later? Well, actually, this is really simple. We just add a layer of indirection here. If we add a new property here for the scene to use, and then we just switch back here, and we set the scene, we'll set the director scene to be what we just set up. Now, wherever we access scene inside here, we're going to access these, this indirection layer here instead. So this means if we ever change that variable for what the active scene is, then our main view controller here will be calling methods on the new scene rather than the old scene. So that gives us a way to switch the scenes, in other words. So going back to the game scene, I'm going to import our game over scene. And going back to our update, here's the case where we lose, that y is less than 0. So we're going to set the scene to be an instance of the new scene. So similarly, in the win condition, we have to add actually a win condition down here. So if bricks.count is zero, destroyed all the bricks, and we can set the win condition to be yes in this case. And finally, going back to the game over scene, this is where we now know how to switch back to a new scene. Instead of game over scene, we want RWT game scene, and it just takes a net with shader like that. Okay, so let's run it, and I'm going to try to lose. All right, and we get our you lose scene. And after five seconds, it goes back to a new game. Now, winning would take a while. So to cheat, I'm going to go over here in the game scene, and I'm just going to say if true temporarily just to make sure the win scene works. And we get the you win. So there you go. We have created a simple 3D game, 3D breakout game, using raw OpenGL, using no game frameworks whatsoever. It's all OpenGL code that you've written yourself, and this should give you a great uh, starting point for your future adventures with OpenGL. So congratulations, you have reached the end of our beginner OpenGL ES and GL kit video tutorial series. So like I said, learning OpenGL is a long journey, so hopefully this has gotten you inspired that you can do it, it's given you a solid starting point, but there's a lot more you can learn. So here's some things that I recommend you do from here. So first of all, just keep learning OpenGL. There's tons of tutorials and books out there. You know, you can play around with it yourself. You can go through all of these challenges if you haven't already. You can try to extend the breakout game. There's a lot you can do. Uh, practice as much as you can. The, the, the more you practice with OpenGL, the more it'll start making sense with you. Learning about linear algebra is a great thing to do. We've been treating it in this video tutorial series as a black box, but you can dive deeper. And also shaders. We only scratched the surface. We did some simple lighting with Fong, but there's a lot more awesome stuff you can do with shaders. And uh, last but not least, if you have any questions, drop me a note anytime. I'm on Twitter as at Orwendelec. So that's it for this video tutorial and the series in general. As always, we'd like to leave you off with a challenge. And your challenge this time, it's really just a special case. It's really just continue learning OpenGL. I hope this tutorial series has inspired you and I can't wait to see what you come up with. So thanks for watching this video tutorial series and we'll see you next time.